the Charlie Hebdo story and the Cartoons affair, the Theo Van Gogh killing, the Salman Rushdie fatwa are all chapters in one single story, which is the story of an aggression by Islamist forces against freedom of speech in Europe and a story of intimidation and silence. At the Charlie Hebdo, they were accustomed to attacks. They were put on trial for Islamophobia in Paris. And they were protected by the police, not so well, because they were all murdered. After the massacre of Charlie Hebdo, the thing that made me and made other journalists, I think, hopeless and bitter were the reaction of the mainstream media, uh, of the journalists, cartoonists, writers, novelists, who decided to not reprint the most famous cover, uh, which had uh, the Prophet Muhammad in the front page. And so all these people, all these cartoonists were murdered and slaughtered for a cartoon, and the other journalists refused to publish the same cartoon. Mm -hmm. The attacks on freedom of expression have been the tip of an iceberg, the final stage of a process which began in 1989 with the fatwa against Salman Rushdie. And in 20 years, fear and violence killed um, lots of pieces of journalism, of literature, arts. And so we are witnessing a kind of, uh, I think, new middle age in Europe, where um, um, books were burned at stake and heretics were killed. The heretics of Charlie Hebdo were the last one to defend freedom of expression. And even then, they decided to capitulate. The, the current editor of Charlie Hebdo uh, decided to not reprint any cartoon uh, of the Islamic issues. If we start uh, with the censorship of cartoons, we finish with uh, covering our own culture. And a few months ago, when the Iran president Rouhani was visiting Rome, the Italian government decided to cover the naked sculptures to not offend the Iranian sensibilities. It's very serious because it was a government decision and it, the Italian government called for respect. But respect means for them submission to the Islamist forces. Uh, a few weeks earlier, the Iranian government decided to raise the bounty on Rushdie and nobody protested. Nobody raised the question with the Iranian delegation. And a few weeks uh, later, we had the Ian Bomerman case, the famous comedian who offended um, the Turkish president Erdogan uh, with a poem in the ZDF television. And he is going to be put on trial for this poem. We saw what happened when the European Union struck a deal with the Turkish government about the visas and nobody raised the topic of freedom of expression. So it was just a migrant deal with uh, no mention of freedom of speech for the Turkish journalists like Kandundar, who was almost shot outside the court, or the Böhmermann, who is going to be put on trial and is under police protection. And is under police protection as many others, cartoonists, writers, journalists, uh, politicians, who are the first refugees in their own country since the Second World War. And there is also a famous Islamic dissident, uh, Ayan Irshiali, who had to fled to the US and to have a safe life because Europe was too dangerous for her and they decided to withdraw the protection, the Dutch government. So, uh, meanwhile, artists and uh, people in the media are be put on trial, like uh, Michel Welbeck in Paris or the Charlie Hebdo cartoonist, or Riana Fallaci in Italy, Eric Zemmour in France. So there is a kind of legal and physical uh, aggression, not only by the terrorists, but also by the cowards who live among us. And ten years ago, um, a Pope Benedict uh, delivered a famous uh, speech in Regensburg, a great univer German university, and it was a lesson about the uh, roots of fanaticism in religion. And he raised the question of Islam he was almost lynched by the media 
in the Islamic Ummah, they attacked the embassies, uh, the Pope was blamed. Ten years later, another Pope, after the Charlie Hebdo massacre, said Pope Francis that they, these cartoonists had a responsibility for what happened to them. So I think Alexander Sojanitsyn was right when he said courage has abandoned the West. Many newspapers around in Rome are protected with the uh, soldiers with guns like in an Afghanistan mission. When you visit these places in Europe you have a feeling of a kind of illusion. The weather is great, the food is great, but uh, there is something missing. Uh, and that missing is, I think, freedom of expression, that we lost it. And I think we are witnessing the last days of Europe as we know it. This is Giulio Meotti for Gatestone Institute in Rome.